I tried building an AI app that compares and scores your resume based on the job description, kind of like the ATS system. And this was using Hugging Face and Langchain, both of which are free tools that give you access to massive ready to use datasets and a framework for AI models. I spent hours studying and using these tools on my own. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what they do, show you a demo of how this works, and even show you how to set up your own app in Google Colab. So let's get into it. Before I get into explaining what Hugging Face and Langchain are, I just want to show you a small preview of what I built. Really simple app, but it's fun to show an initial output. So let's start out with a demo of the resume reviewer. First, we've installed all of the packages we need. Next, we're going to load the actual resume PDF. So we're going to go ahead and run the application and we choose a file. And I actually have a copy of my resume, which is redacted, that we're going to load in. So this is my resume that I'm going to load in. I have have all my experience as a software engineer. I worked at Microsoft and Target and then a startup before that. So we're going to load this in. And if it doesn't work, it's going to actually take the resume from my Google Drive mount. Now we're going to paste the job description that we're comparing it to. So here I just found a software engineering position at Meta and I'm going to copy and paste this entire description so we can compare it against the resume. So here you can see the iOS responsibilities, the minimum qualifications, preferred qualifications. OK, so we pasted it in. So here you can see this is the feedback prompt that we're giving OpenAI. Uh, you're a resume review expert. The user got a resume review relevancy score, which was already calculated. And now based on that, it's going to be prompted to tell us what's wrong with the resume and how to fix it, basically. Okay, so our similarity score is low. It's 20%. And there's a ton of resume feedback on what is wrong with our resume and how we can change things. So it's mostly using wrappers, it's using Langchain, it's using Hugging Face, and we're going to get into how all of this works. Oh, and here's the result with the finished UI as well, which I'll show you more at the end of the video. So again, this is just something simple to get you started, but let's talk about why I'm using Hugging Face and Langchain. So let's start with first, what is Hugging Face? Hugging Face is one of the most powerful AI platforms to use when working with LLM models. They have thousands of different models for your use and they're completely free. This is a big deal because normally training a model like GPT-4 costs millions of dollars due to the enormous data sets or the compute power required. And if you want to run models like GPT or Stable Diffusion locally, you need really high performance GPUs. Hugging Face actually removes the barriers that make these LLMs otherwise inaccessible. It's kind of like having resources available on the cloud rather than lugging around physical servers. Likewise, you don't need to buy and train and run expensive models locally. I mean, look at all these options that you can use. And some are easily accessible with a Hugging Face token once you set up an account. Now, they use these things called transformers, which is an open source Python library that gives us access to thousands of pre-trained models. This is what I'll be using in the code to pull in models like GPT, BART, and others without having to train anything from scratch. So just to give you an example, here's some popular models in the Hugging Face transformers. So for example, GPT-2, GPT-3, it's best for text generation, using a chat bot or story writing. You can also use BERT, which is an NLP, and this is more for text classification or NER, which is named entity recognition. And then there are things like Stable Diffusion, which is really good for AI image generation, and then Whisper, which is really good for speech to text transcription. So before I keep explaining what it does, let's jump into the example that I showed you earlier so we can break it down in the code. So to get started, you're going to need a couple of things. First, a Google Colab account. That's where we're going to run all of our code. You'll also want to install all the necessary libraries and feel free to use Gemini inside Colab to help debug or explain any tricky code. Okay, so we won't get too bogged up in the setup. The part that's most relevant is right here. We're using Hugging Face's pipeline function with a pre-trained BART model. So you can see here we're using Facebook BART large CNN to summarize the job description. But why? Well, because we're trying to figure out how well your resume matches the job that we're applying for. So instead of feeding a long wall of text to the comparison model, we first condense the job description into something more focused and relevant. Okay, so where does Langchain come into all of this then? So Langchain can be used for pretty heavyweight uses, but it's a Python library designed to help build applications powered by large language models like GPT or Claude. It provides tools for loading and processing documents, connecting to different LLMs, creating chains of logic and integrating with vector databases for retrieval. But in our case, we're just using it for something small but useful. In this case, it's the document loading capability. This is where it's used in the code. So first, what we're doing is we're giving Langchain a PDF file as in-memory bytes. Then what we're doing is the PI PDF loader prepares to read and parse that file. Do you see that dot load part? That's extracting the contents of the PDF and returning a list of document 
objects, usually one per page. Now, each document contains page content or text and metadata, like a page number. Then the last thing is we join all of that information. So at the end, I'm using probably a pretty commonly known LLM, GPT, and specifically GPT 3.5 Turbo. This part is specifically for giving a relevancy score between the resume and the job description. It also gives feedback on what to change in the resume or why certain parts don't fit. Now, OpenAI requires you to buy tokens in order to hit their API. So this part isn't free, but I did try other models that were free and honestly, it just didn't work as well. The comments were irrelevant and the relevancy scores weren't really consistent. So this worked best for me. I would just keep that in mind, but feel free to use any sort of LLM to test things out. So now that you know how to generally put together a simple program using Hugging Face and Langchain, let's talk more about the other features that Hugging Face has. And at the end, I can show you how to make our resume reviewer even prettier using Gradio. So Hugging Face has even more libraries than I let on. Hugging Face Datasets is a library that gives you instant access to over 30,000 machine learning datasets. This includes text datasets like Wikipedia or Open Web Text, image datasets like Coco or ImageNet, speech datasets like Libri Speech or Vox Celeb, and then even multi-module datasets like Leon for text image pairs. So maybe none of that makes sense to you, but let me show you an example of us actually using some of these datasets. So for example, let's load an IMDB Hugging Face dataset using Python. Okay, so now let's look at the IMDB dataset. So we're loading that in, and then we're also just gonna print a sample review. This is gonna be just a random review. Okay, so it's printed out someone's review about Curious Yellow, and they're just talking about whether or not they liked it, the politics behind it, and then a little bit more about the plot. So let's spice it up a little and look for very specific movie reviews. So here again, we're loading in the data set, but this time we're looking for any reference to the matrix in our text. And then we're gonna print out reviews, the top three reviews to be exact. And we're gonna also label them as positive or negative. A label is marked as one if it's positive or zero if it's negative. So here you can see we have three reviews and we have all three of them are actually negative. Um, but if we actually read through these reviews, they're not about the matrix at all. They reference the word, the matrix, but it's not quite the movie that we're looking for, which could make searching with this data set kind of difficult sometimes. Um, maybe if we try a very specific movie title like Matrix Reloaded. Okay, so we do get some more reviews and this one seems to be the actual Matrix Reloaded movie. So we've gotten the correct views and unfortunately they're all negative, but I guess it is what it is. So in this example, we're just setting data set equal to load data set IMDB and we've also imported the data set as well. And so this downloads and loads the full IMDB data set, which contains 50,000 training reviews, 25,000 test reviews, and each review is labeled as either positive or negative. Okay, and then there's also a bunch of data sets that have static images as well. Now these aren't dynamic, meaning that they don't generate the images on the spot. There are other libraries that you can use for that, but they're paid libraries. So I'm just going to show you the static image data set. Okay, so now we're going to look at a data set for images. Now, again, this isn't image generation, it's static images. Okay, so we've loaded in the code and it's grabbed a random image, Bronze Age Lizard Warrior carrying a round shield and a few javelins by Frank Frazetta. And so you can see that we've loaded a very specific data set. It's Diffusion DB. And then we've included a sample image, just one random image, and then we're going to display it. It's very, very simple, but it's just an example of the data sets that Hugging Face provides. It's very difficult to create your own data sets, or it can be very expensive and time consuming. So this is one way that you can access a bunch of different data sets at your own disposal. We can load a sample from Stable Diffusion this way. So for example, here we're just importing the load data set and then also importing display. Um, and then we're setting data set equal to just loading the Diffusion DB data set. Um, and then we're just grabbing a sample image from the data set and then we're displaying it. If you wanna generate your own images through Stable Diffusion using Hugging Face, you'd actually need the gated access via Hugging Face token. So here's an example of what you can use if you want to create your own images. Also, recall how I said that we can make the resume reviewer prettier with Gradio before? Yeah, that's the cool thing about this platform. It's pretty easy to attach a ready to use UI. So one easy example is just creating a wrapper around GPT-2 and then using Gradio to make it prettier. So of course we've imported Gradio here and most of the logic is still the same. The biggest difference is the styling. So for example, we have some HTML here with CSS inline and I've set the background color, the padding, the border, 
um, just the background image as well. And then we also have printed out the actual resume underneath a header called resume preview. And then if I scroll down a little bit more, you can see that I have some custom purple background CSS, which makes an appearance for about two seconds. But yeah, basically you wanted to do that to make it a little bit nicer. And then we're actually using this Gradio interface with styling. And so you can see all of this information here with our title, our description. We have custom CSS that we're loading in. And then we have specific inputs as well, such as our file and the text box and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and run this. So you could see the purple kind of made an appearance for a second. So in reality, later, I'm going to probably change the main background to purple, not just when it's loading. But here, for example, you can see we have our AI resume reviewer. It looks a little bit prettier already. We're going to drop our resume. So I'm going to upload the resume. And then we want a job description here as well. So I'm just going to grab maybe a random job description from Amazon. So let's look at the senior software development engineer. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste all of this, honestly, paste it, and submit. And so now it's going to print out the resume as well as a relevancy score, like how close is the resume to the actual job description. And then it'll say specific details on what needs to improve about the resume to get that relevancy score up. A few moments later. Hey, so you can see um, it looks a little prettier. Of course, there's a lot of work to be done. So there's a bit of a frame here. And then this is the actual resume that it's printed out. The header is in gray slash white. So it's hard to see. Also, the padding is just too big here. So we can fix that for sure. And then also indentation can be fixed. But this is generally how the UI is going to look. Um, and then at the end, of course, there's feedback. So there's areas for improvement. There's general suggestions. Talks about how the resume lacks a mention of specific experience with AWS or cloud technologies, which are preferred for the job role. There's no mention of experience with machine learning techniques, which are also preferred for the job role. And then just general suggestions. Consider adding a skill section specifically highlighting any experience or proficiency with AWS cloud. So there's a lot of emphasis on AWS. Highlight any relevant projects or experiences that demonstrate your ability to work in a fast-paced environment with high creativity and analytical reasoning skills. Okay, I just quick ran this again because I realized the relevancy score wasn't printed out. So what I did was I just added another header with the similarity or relevancy score right before the highlighted resume. So if we go up, you can see that we've created our similarity score here, just passing in the resume as well as the job description and then using PyTorch, using the following to actually create that relevancy score. So here we can actually see the relevancy score this time. It is 36%, which is not great. But again, that's why we have suggestions on how to make things look better. And with our specific example, I went ahead and created a space to print out the resume and highlight the things that were wrong with the PDF so we could visually see what was going on. I hit a snag with the highlighting part, but you can already start to see how things look better for the user by creating a little UI UX magic. So hopefully those examples were really cool to look at. I just wanted to show you those today so that it would encourage you to start tinkering around with the code and just to be more aware of what's out there in terms of platforms to help you use LLMs and AI a little bit easier. Creating an AI app doesn't have to be crazy hard in the beginning. The easiest way is to use pre-trained models and create a wrapper around them. Pretty it up with UI and also just think of a use case. Each model may be better for specific things, i.e. text generation, summarization, image generation. So it's cool to just play around with whatever already exists and then build off of that rather than reinventing things. And understanding the use case is especially important as an engineer because you'll come across these problems in real life as well. So hopefully you guys like this video and comment down below if you want to see more videos like this. So talk to you guys later.